invariably. Hmm. Um, sometimes people have the idea that they can connect. I know when I was a younger man, I, I was taught this, the, the Dale Carnegie book. And I love the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. But as a young, aggressive A-type, I took that material not the way Mr. Carnegie intended it. I took it with, people are my way to get what I want. That's right. And, uh, very and easy so to do. Very, very manipulative yes. almost. And so I saw the, the, the relationship as a commodity. But you've got to really get emotionally and spiritually the other side of that and approach that from a true service, a true, I'm going to help you even if I don't get anything out of it. Well, that's exactly right. And, and if I can just throw in a, a rabbinic element, that is the whole message of the story of Joseph and his brothers. The, the brothers were going to kill Joseph, and Judah said, what profit is there in selling our brother? Which means the brothers think, hey, if you can figure out a way to make a buck, let's kill him. But they couldn't, so they came up with the idea of selling him. And, 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 and well, now he made a dollar. This, this, is, this is like the worst anti-Semitic stereotype, isn't it? Uh, but then Joseph fixes everything up, and he, he sends them their money back with them in the sack and they come home with the, 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 the food after the famine, they went to Egypt, they open their bags and they all panic, they see the original money there and they don't catch on. Joseph is giving them a message, it's not about the money you idiots, it's about the relationships. The relationships build money, money doesn't build relationships. Hmm. Now I've quoted you a lot recently with the, um, with the economy being what it is yeah. and the self-fulfilling prophecy that drives the stock market. And you often say that money is spiritual. It involves a faith element. It involves a hope element. These yes. are spiritual things. Talk about that in these economic times with the stock market, the housing market, the, uh, sure. the general economic malaise that's out there. Well, one of the best proofs that, uh, that money is spiritual, of course, is uh, that it's possible to destroy without actually touching it. And, uh, and what I mean by that is that uh, if I want to damage a motor car, I've got to come there with a sledgehammer or a or, or, or some way to damage it. But damaging money, it's, it's really very, very different. Uh, uh, if we were able to persuade everybody, if, if through the power of your show, you managed to persuade everybody that at noon tomorrow, a giant big meteorite was going to slam into the earth and destroy everything. And, and you're a cheerful sort of guy, so you put the best face on it. And you say, hey, everybody, look, it's not just the Baptists, it's the Jews as well. Everybody's going. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, and, and you've all had a pretty good ride up till now, so, uh, so relax, it's over. You know, it's all ending tomorrow. And if we can persuade people that the world is really ending because of a giant meteorite slamming into the planet tomorrow, what have we done to everyone's net worth? Destroyed it. And if you don't believe me, just try and sell something. You have zero value because the world is ending tomorrow. The knowledge that the world is over, the knowledge that there is no tomorrow and no next week, utterly destroys wealth. Now let's play the reverse analogy. Let's imagine that once again, using your natural ebullience and your compelling persuasiveness, you're able to persuade everybody that not only is tomorrow going to be fantastic. You've just got to persuade people. The market's gone up, values are coming back at lunchtime tomorrow. It's a miracle. It's incredible. And not only that, but everyone is going to be able to live for 300 years. You're all going to have lifespans of 300 years. What has happened to people's net worth? Literally, just by your persuading people of that. This demonstrates how psychological money is. It's spiritual. It's not tangible. It's, it has nothing to do with discs of metal. And, um, and that's why it is that, uh, that in many ways the, uh, the, the media that, that sell subscriptions and gather eyeballs by means of talking about how horrible everything is and how bad everything is, uh, without question, extend it. And that's why it is that very often all you need is just the slightest uptick in the market and there's a whole different atmosphere around. And that helps to fuel further uptick and further movement in the right direction. So uh, I, I actually believe without any question whatsoever that although times are a little bit tough, they're nowhere near as bad as you'd come to believe if all your information came from media. But if you, you're actually out there talking to people and you see how many mortgages in America are being paid on time, right now over 90% of the mortgages in America are actually being paid on time. And if you look at the number of people who are working and you look at the various industries that are actually doing very well indeed, you say to yourself, you know what? This is all going to turn around a whole lot quicker than any of the naysayers are saying. Yeah. I, I tried to go to a sporting goods store on Saturday, and uh, this is a sporting goods store. I don't think there's a single necessity in there. Right. And there was not a single parking space. I parked around back in the warehouse area and walked <laughs> yes. around to get in the place. I don't, I don't know why I even wanted to go in there knowing it was going to be that crowded. But yeah. they had good checkout lines. We got Wonderful. right out. But, I mean, I, I came out of there with my stuff going, where are all these people in here for recreation on yes. a Saturday 
but we're supposed to be in the worst time since the Great Depression. It's yeah. just not logical. No, it isn't. And so, yes, there's some folks hurting out there, but yes. the reality is in the marketplace that there's a lot more economic activity than the media would indicate. And the scary thing is, depending on what you watch and what you believe, tells us what you're going to do about your future. That is exactly right. The belief is there. And also, I mean, you know, not to be too uh, crass about it, but uh, folks who've been taking your advice for years and who are now cash rich, what a great time for them, isn't it? What a oh. marvelous set of opportunities are waiting. Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Rabbi, good to be with you again, Thanks sir. Thanks very much indeed, Dave. Guys, I want you to go to the rabbi's website. You need a rabbi.com because believe me, after we've become friends, I know everybody needs a rabbi, and I've got a good one. <laughs> you need a rabbi.com, or you can call him at 888 rabbi41 if you'd like. But I want you to sign up for his weekly thoughts, spiritual thoughts, a lot of things like we've been talking about here today. Sometimes they have a business application, sometimes they don't. They're called, called thought tools and you can sign up for that it's a weekly email i get it and i enjoy reading it it's one of the one of about five of those kinds of things i get he's got one of them on that takes up my email inbox every more every week so uh, again you need a rabbi.com check it out and be sure you get this book if you don't read another book this year you got to read this one that's how important this book is. It will change your mindset permanently on how you serve in the marketplace and how to prosper even during these economic times. Thou shall prosper. Ten commandments for making money. Buy it at a bookstore. You can buy it at a discounted price if you want to go to our website right now at DaveRamsey.com. We've got them there for you. Plus, be sure to check out his website and everything else. Hey, good stuff here.